Good morning, Freedom Life. Good morning to all the campuses. So excited to be here this morning. I'm from Indonesia, the fourth largest country in the world. It's 270 million people on 17,000 islands. And I want to take you to one of those islands this morning, the island of Sumba. Sumba is a primitive island. Not a lot of hope, not a lot of opportunities. That's why about 15 years ago, we began what we call the Sumba House of Hope to give an opportunity to young people that would never get a chance. My first memory of Sumba was watching kids come home from school, carrying their shoes in their hands. I'll never forget. I asked the, the driver, what's going on? The pavement's very hot. I mean, are their shoes too small? And his answer was, oh no, they're too valuable. I'll never forget that feeling of injustice when I went back to my house the next couple of days and opened my closet to see all of my shoes on the floor. Well, we take young people, we select them from villages because of their potential. They may be intelligent, they may be, have some kind of uh, a talent, music or sports or leadership potential because we are attempting to shape and to develop the future leaders of this island. Islands, uh, so leaders will make choices, choices that will influence the future of these people. We are attempting to change the course of history. We're attempting to transform an island in a generation. You may ask, is that easy? No. Hundreds of years of steeped in old ways, religious systems, fear of spirits, the old animistic religion, true poverty, poor education. In fact, the young boys will just follow in their father's footsteps of waiting for the yearly rainfall and planting seeds, one seed at a time. The girls without education will become virtual slaves as they are purchased in the traditional marriage systems. They're basically living like their ancestors did hundreds of years ago without electricity without running water. They strive every day just to survive. And every single day, I'm always very well aware. In fact, I ask myself the question, why, why did I get the privilege of being born in America with all kinds of opportunities? And so I'm always thinking, Jesus said, what do to other people as you would have them do to you? Love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. And I'm always thinking, if I was a kid born in Sumba, I could have been born here. What would I want someone to do for me? What would I want someone to help me with? And so we bring kids to a complex that is extremely developed. They have lots of opportunities. And the transformation process begins. At the beginning, they, it's internal as they meet Jesus for the first time and they all of a sudden in a relationship with God. And you can watch it as they begin to think differently. Then they understand education. They go to school six days a week, not just like once or twice in the village. Learn what it means to eat three meals a day, not just the leftovers once a day. Learn how to brush their teeth, wash their, wash their hands. Learn what it means to have more than one pair of clothes. You learn how to use computers. Learn how to speak English. Learn how to do all kinds of business and finance. The issues is they are transformed on the outside, but it's the internal transformation that is so amazing. And you can watch it in their eyes as for the first time, they can actually look at you in the eye and they can tell you, I believe I've been chosen by God to do this with my life. We are transforming an island in a generation. You see, within the next 30 to 50 years, we will have trained more than 2,000 young people who will become the political leaders, the business leaders, the educators, leaders of sports and music and entertainment systems. They'll have transformed their family structures. And women will have value. Girls will all of a sudden be esteemed. And I want to say thank you to you, Freedom Life, because you have been supporting, you have been enabling us to resource our people, to actually change their paradigms, to transform their island, their lives in a generation. People often ask me, but Doug, is that really possible? Can you really change an entire people? Yeah, I say, not only can you, I think we're called to do that. Could you go into a place and select the key leaders? Could you invest your life 30 to 50 years? Could you focus on structures, social structures, transforming them and do what the disciples did, see the world turned upside down? talking about the island of Sumba. It's a, a space a little bit larger than the greater Philadelphia metropolitan area. A million people. People that don't have a chance. People that are stuck in old ways of thinking. Could the governor actually come from the Sumba House of Hope? We try to work in the villages, in places that don't have a lot of opportunity. In, a, in an island that's very dry. Two months of the year rain, ten months of drought. We dig wells, we build water pipelines, we build reservoirs, we put water tanks next to the churches. We even have a water house, the, a, a truck that brings water. You can watch the people coming to bring their jugs. They want to live, they want to eat, they want to drink, they want to be able to wash and to cook, they want to survive. 
places that don't have medical assistance, we bring medical assistance and we say, this is Jesus with flesh on. He cares about you. In an island that's gorgeous and becoming targeted as a tourist place, we do English training. We have over 75 to 100 kids that learn English every day at our place. They learn how to use computers. In fact, they're so excited. We come back to the government office. They say, I can type with 10 figures. They can only use two. <laughs> and they're so excited. In an island that's totally gripped with poverty, our kids are trying to change the perspective. What does it mean to create your own wealth? How can you take a little asset, $15 goat, raise it up and sell her $40, then don't use the money, but buy two goats, and then four goats, six, eight. All of our kids have more money than their parents. And they'll tell you, we are going to transform our world in our lifetime. This is what's happening. And, that, and the, the, the issue of worship, but being able to experience God's presence. In our island, there's a local religion, Marapu. There's a distant God, no relationship, but you must appease him with blood sacrifice. So every major event, you're killing animals, killing animals, killing. You want people to know that in the presence of Christ, your life can be changed. You don't have to have kill an animal. Christ has already died for you. And prayer. I want to say thank you to you that pray for us. Our kids, every morning, 5 o'clock, they get up and they pray. They tell you that's why they have learned to know what God wants for them. Because they have experienced the grace and the, and the greatness of God. And so I want to say thank you to you for praying for us. For giving us a chance to experience God's grace in His, His presence. I want to thank you for praying for me during my challenge this last year of surgeries. And My youngest boy, woke up. I woke up out of a coma. And I'll never forget I looked at him, I said, is it serious? And Donnie said, yeah, but you're not going to die. You cannot die because too many people are praying for you. And this issue of God's presence, his power invading our world, invading our lives, this is what God is all about. This is my oldest son. His name is Don. Met him in a finance training that I did in his village. Extremely brilliant. I found that he had dropped out of school because his parents could not afford the giant fee of $7.50. He came to our place and God began to transform his life. We read through the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation the first two years. God changed his thinking. He loved to play soccer. He was out playing every afternoon, four o'clock, then three o'clock, two o'clock. Then the kids, as soon as he got out of school, would run to the house of hope. We got to play soccer. And then Don said, no, you got to go home and do your chores. Well, then the parents started coming to us and say, what did you do to my kid? I mean, he wants to clean the house. He's asking to help cook. He's asking to help. And I'm watching these guys transform their lives. They quit smoking, drinking quit fighting, cussing, because these would all get a yellow card, couldn't play soccer for a whole week. But today you can watch these kids is at the soccer field singing their soccer song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. You can watch the transformation of their thinking as all of a sudden they're excited that God has changed who they are. And I love that we've become the number one soccer team in the island. And God's actually even opened the door, Don, become a, a government position in Sumba, being prepared to become a senator in, the, in Jakarta, being prepared at some day to become the governor of the island. You see, God always has a plan. He always has a, a strategy. He always has a perspective. Because he wants to do what we cannot do. He wants to do what we cannot do in our own strength, in our own flesh. He wants to do it through us. That's what these kids are about. Their lives are being changed. Marlon, totally transformed. Mercy, totally transformed. These kids are studying university. Their lives are being changed by the power of God. And I want to say thank you, Freedom Life, for giving us a chance to change people's lives forever. Thank you very much. God bless you.